The image you are seeing now is a meme. Not only is it a meme, but it's a meme about memes. Playing off of an evolutionary biology chart, the image depicts the memes of the past contrasted against the ones of the present, noting how only few have survived, with the others being replaced by newer, though similar, variants. But what does this mean? Show this image to your parents and you'll get nothing but a blank, confused, fluoride stare. What does it mean for a meme to survive? What makes a meme old or new? In fact, what even is a meme? To answer these deep and pressing questions, we'll have to start from the beginning to see how memes are used as a form of communication, how these copy and pasted faces, or rage comics, were widely used in the past, and how and why their modern equivalents came to be. The word meme has become a ubiquitous term understood in various ways by almost all people who use the internet in any fashion. Generally speaking, a meme is an image or video shared by multiple people that adheres to a repeated comedic format. Colloquially, the term can be used to refer to any sort of shared comedic internet post. However, a meme is not simply a viral video or a piece of media that is shared at a high rate. Rather, memes are characterized not by their uniqueness, but by their similarity with other memes of the same format. Google defines it as an image, a video, piece of text, etc., typically humorous in nature that is copied and spread rapidly by internet users, often with slight variations. In fact, the word meme originates from the Greek mimeme, meaning imitation. Interestingly enough, the term was coined by the British evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. In this book, Dawkins explains what he considers to be the evolutionary traits of selfishness and altruism. He makes the observation that there is a fast-growing new kind of evolution, cultural evolution. He says, I think that a new kind of replicator has recently emerged on this very planet. It is staring us in the face. It is still in its infancy, still drifting clumsily about in its primeval soup, but already it is achieving evolutionary change at a rate that leaves the old gene panting far behind. The new soup is the soup of human culture. We need a name for the new replicator, a noun that conveys the idea of a unit of cultural transmission, or a unit of imitation. Mimim comes from a suitable Greek root, but I want a monosyllable that sounds a bit like gene. I hope my classicist friends will forgive me if I abbreviate mimim to meme. Thus we see that a meme in its original sense is any kind of shared cultural idea, something that, like a gene, spreads from person to person. Understanding this, a meme can apply to almost any kind of human media, be it literature, art, or even just common expressions. Dawkins surely had no idea how widespread and ubiquitous his self-made term would become. Dawkins' meme would itself become a kind of meme, the term being spread rapidly, taking on slightly varied meanings and usages. With this primitive definition of meme, we see that memes have always been a part of human culture. Commonly repeated images, ideas, or expressions have always acted as a window into how a particular culture sees the world. As for the immediate pre-internet era, things like Kilroy was here, Frodo lives, and Andre the Giant has a posse were commonly repeated and copied phrases. These kinds of early memes were often repeated via graffiti or placed stickers. It could be argued that religious symbols act as a kind of meme. Though certainly not intended to be humorous, images of the cross, the Christian ichthys, or other commonly repeated symbols act as quick and simple ways to indicate a religious idea or affiliation, subject to endless variation and personal customization, just like a modern meme. It wouldn't be until the widespread use of the internet that such a concept could be fully realized and so clearly defined. The internet has allowed for information to spread at an incredibly fast rate, being consumed and copied by more people than ever before in history. Naturally, just as certain kinds of literature, art, expressions, and ideas spread far and wide in the pre-internet era, now these things can be created, seen, and recreated by anyone with a computer. Early examples of internet memes similar to common graffiti symbols would be the images made with text posted to any public space. One of the earliest is the cow guide, a text image of a cow copy and pasted with ever-changing additions to indicate different kinds of cows. A more well-known example would be the raffle copter. Rather than people carving images into walls and walkways, these kinds of images were posted in online chat rooms, at work, and at home. Sites like Usenet and later, most prominently, 4chan were breeding grounds for these kinds of memes. Memes would become a lot more complex when actual images and videos slash GIFs became involved. Things like the dancing baby, hamster dance, peanut butter jelly time, and all your base are belong to us were widely popular amongst internet users at the time. 
By far the most popular of these early meme formats was the basic top text bottom text memes, featuring an image with impact font text on both the top and the bottom of the image, usually acting as a setup and a punchline. Memes of this format had subformats within themselves, with templates specifically for certain kinds of jokes using the format, such as One Does Not Simply, Bad Luck Brian, Ancient Aliens Guy, Condescending Willy Wonka, Disappointed Picard, Suspicious Fry, Grumpy Cat, and of course, Doge. Also common and sometimes mixed with this format was the demotivational poster format, which began as parodies of office motivational posters, but eventually became a standard way to caption an image with the setup and punchline, usually being first a word and then an explanation of the word below. These two formats made the genre much more popular as they were simple and required little to no prior context. They relied on basic, relatable jokes, with images clearly portraying different emotions using characters from pop culture. Comedic images with captions were common long before the internet. The most common form of this humor before the internet would easily be the newspaper comic. It is no wonder why memes, which were nothing more than the rapidly spreading internet-era version of cultural expressions, would eventually find their greatest and most relatable foothold in a user-generated version of what are essentially newspaper comics for the internet. Enter Rage Comics the culmination of early internet meme culture. In August of 2008, a user on the 4chan slash B message board uploaded a four-panel comic demonstrating the rage one feels when experiencing toilet splashback. This crude but relatable comic quickly became a textbook meme, being turned into a template for endless variation of the same comedic setup and punchline. Person attempts to do something, they fail because of a humorous inconvenience, person proceeds to rage. Naturally, the character became known as the Rage Guy, and the format was titled Rage Comics. This format began to spread like wildfire thanks to the creation of the subreddit r slash f7u12 in January 2009. It was here that these primitive rage comics were spread en masse. Though these comics got their name from this original rage guy, who had many direct offshoots portraying him with several other more neutral expressions often leading up to the inevitable rage, other characters quickly began to appear that became incorporated into these comics, all drawn in essentially the same black and white, line art, MS Paint style. Some of the most notable characters included Serial Guy, OK Guy, Forever Alone Guy, Why You Know Guy, Me Gusta Guy, and of course, the infamous Troll Face. Each of these acted as a simple demonstration of common emotions, and the mixing and matching of them in comics depicting any given situation was endless. Comic generators, websites in which templates along with a catalog of the rage faces were provided for user customization, made it very easy for these to be created by anyone. Dan Awesome, who created the often used RageMaker.net, said about Rage Comics, A perfect example is the sad OK face. Just looking at that face gives you a pretty good understanding of how that person feels. Expressing that exact same feeling in words would take some creative writing. The New York Times wrote in 2012, Today, thousands of rage comics are posted daily. Most are the creations of anonymous people seeking not fame, but an audience with whom they can air their dark wit. Popular themes are public embarrassment, private shame in the bedroom or bathroom, and most of all, the unbearable burden of dealing with other people's stupidity. Despite the absurdity and patent silliness of these poorly drawn characters and the ridiculous situations they portrayed, these comics were widely popular precisely because they were relatable. They were easy to understand, transcending the inner circle of the quote-unquote chronically online. These characters were like emojis, simple, highly expressive portraits of emotions that anybody can use and comprehend. Brad Kim, a Know Your Meme editor, remarked, Rage Guy comics and its spin-offs tend to illustrate real-life anecdotes that others can easily empathize. With. Let's return to the original premise of this video, the meme from the start about the ecology of internet memes. With that in mind, it is easy to see that Richard Dawkins' original definition of meme as a kind of cultural version of the biological evolution of genes is an incredibly insightful way to understand internet memes, especially rage comics. Writing for Ars Technica in 2012, Tom Connor wrote, Once merely obscure inside jokes on the image board 4chan, the rage face comics that now appear widely on the internet have been toughened by natural selection as they evolved into a dominant species of internet meme. The amateur cartoons made with a recurring set of expressive characters are used by a growing international community. Far from being insignificant doodles, the faces are now an accepted and standardized form of online communication used to tell stories that can be quick and funny or serious and deeply personal. Dawkins would be proud. Rage comic memes truly had become a unit of cultural transmission. As these comics spread, the proverbial weak were outperformed by the strong. Connor notes, Though many of the original comics on 4chan were drawn from scratch, 
It soon became commonplace for artists to reuse faces that did a particularly good job of showing a certain emotion. The more these faces were reused, the more they encouraged reuse, and the common threads began to appear. As is the case in any population, the fittest individuals flourished and multiplied, while weaker specimens faded into obscurity. Rage comics enjoyed massive popularity for years. Anyone who frequented the internet was aware of them, and their presence in other popular meme formats and their overall relatability made them the crowning example of how internet meme culture works. Random users create symbols representing thoughts, feelings, or ideas, and an ever-growing sea of other random users engage in the propagation and popularization of said symbols as a legitimate, though humorous, form of communication. Dan Awesome is recorded as saying regarding the evolution of Rage comics, I think they'll almost replace emoticons in three years' time, and they'll be commonplace. Everybody will know about them, and everybody will use them. While Awesome's optimistic prediction may have held somewhat true for a brief period, like any species, Rage Comics would meet their end in what we can rightly call the mass extinction. An important and so far unstated truth about memes is their transitory nature. A meme is simply a trend in cultural communication. Like all trends, memes eventually die and are superseded by newer, different memes. Rage comics were no exception. Naturally, rage comics were left behind in the ever-changing landscape of the internet. While never fully disappearing, and their basic comedic structure certainly never becoming defunct, the presence of these characters in memes was superseded by the modern, even more mainstream jokes originating from platforms like Vine and Instagram. Things like Spongebob memes and of course Harambe defined the consciousness of the meme world. Yet there would be a handful of survivors of this mass extinction that would go on to populate the next generation. There was another product of this early era of Rage comics that we have yet to discuss, mainly because it developed separately from the others. Enter Wojak. This MS Paint illustration that you have probably seen before was originally circulated by a Polish user named Wojak in or around 2009. The character was originally named Feels Guy, thanks to the early modification of the character hugging another person with the caption, I know that feel bro. Another early variation was the I wish I was at home guy, who was depicted at a party desiring to leave to go be alone and play video games, a format which would much later be repurposed as the they don't know meme. This character was designed with a wistful expression to convey disappointment or general discontent with a situation. The YouTuber Green Guy has an excellent video, which is linked in the description, on the full history and development of the Wojak character, and actually posits, based on very convincing evidence, that the Wojak was originally designed as a neutral or non-smiling variation of the troll face. The Wojak would go on to become popular on 4chan as an expression of young male loneliness, with multiple variations developing during the same time that Rage comics were flourishing. Despite the visual and conceptual similarity between Rage comics and the Wojak, these two would develop on separate tracks and the Wojak, during this period, would not enjoy the kind of widespread popularity and cultural impact as the Rage comics. It should also be noted that Wojak has an intertwined history with the Pepe the Frog trend, another MS Paint creation which developed in the early to mid-2010s. It would not be until around 2018 that Wojaks would become an entire medium, exploding into massive popularity comparable to the earlier use of Rage comics. The amount of variations of this one character are innumerable. In rapid succession, these variations popped up, portraying all kinds of emotions and people, all following the same basic MS Paint style. These were highly customizable, relatable, and easy to understand. Some of the most notable examples are the NPC variant, the various Umer variations such as the Zoomer or the Doomer, the Big Brain Wojaks, the Brainlets, the Soyjaks, the Trad Wife and the Doomer Girl, and perhaps one of the most famous, the Chad. Each of these have been subject to boundless remakes and remixes. The Umer variations can be made to fit any kind of particular person or demographic. The Soy Jacks are made up of primarily tracings of real people who fit the Soy Boy label. And within each of these variations, there are sub-variations that can sprout off into their own entire separate meme family. Even more so than the Rage comics, the evolution and development of these Wojaks and their many, many comedic formats has been incredibly fast and seemingly endless. If you frequent online social platforms, you'd be hard-pressed not to run into people reposting and creating Wojak memes left and right in countless contexts. It should also be noted that many of these Wojaks are very politically charged, something not nearly as common amongst the original Rage comics, and certainly a reflection of modern culture. If you couldn't already tell, it's clear that Wojaks have quite literally replaced Rage comics as the form of cultural expression amongst internet users. Let's run through the patent similarities. Black and white, MS Paint drawings originating mainly from 4chan representative of common and relatable feelings and scenarios. 
highly customizable, constantly being used in different formats that grow off of one another, evolved from niche inside jokes to widely culturally known and significant symbols with which people identify. It's a simple observation, yet it's truly profound how something like Rage Comics would develop, then die out, then be replaced by another similar convention from the original era, like a phoenix being born out of its own ashes. As the original premise for this video suggests, like a biological community, Rage Comics existed and thrived in their ecosystem and were faced with an extinction that left only the strongest to survive and repopulate. Though this post-extinction generation may look and work slightly differently, their genetic, or memetic, connection is abundantly clear. This demonstrates that, just as in biology, memes are not unrelated to each other and do not develop out of thin air. The gradual evolution from Rage Comics to Wojax demonstrates that Dawkins' original definition rings true. A meme certainly is a replicator, a unit of cultural transmission, or a unit of imitation. Wojaks serve the same exact purpose as the Rage comics. They are simple, basic, easy to understand symbols representing common cultural thoughts, feelings, stereotypes, and experiences. In fact, Wojaks are arguably even more versatile and easily relatable than Rage comics ever were. Essentially, the entire family of Wojaks descending from and resembling one single model, rather than the slightly more disparate evolution of Rage comics, provides a universal base from which they can all stem. The Wojak is the new gen Rage guy, the template for all subsequent variations. There is a modern equivalent for the Rage Face, Derpina, Forever Alone, OK Guy, and even the Troll Face, and arguably everything else and more. The ecological community was replaced by a stronger breed, a new mimetic variation that, just as its predecessor, has become a baseline for cultural communication and expression. Wojaks are the Rage comics of the modern era. What does all of this mean? So far, we have seen that memes in general have always existed and act as a cultural equivalent to genetic development. The internet allowed for this concept to be fully realized in user-generated humor subject to mass copying and variation. The most successful and relatable of these early internet memes were the Rage comics, which transcended the typical joke format to being a sort of language altogether. In other words, Rage comics were not like knock-knock jokes, they became the very form of communication, the very language with which to express the joke. As with all all languages and cultural trends, the Rage comics gradually fell out of common use and other meme formats became more popular. Despite this extinction, certain elements from this original ecosystem, namely the distant relative Wojak, came out of hibernation and began a meme revolution, serving as a practical replacement for Rage comics and cementing itself as a universal form of expression amongst internet users. This simplified view of the development of internet memes begs the very important question, what's next? If Rage Comics were born, became popular, died, and were replaced by another nearly identical phenomenon, will this happen again? Will Wojax die and be replaced by another template symbol of expression? The answer is most likely yes. Just as Rage Comics were universally used only to die and be replaced, so also will Wojax, the current universally used form of expression, become stale and irrelevant only to be replaced by another in the future. The question is, what will this next ecological meme community look like? Will it be another direct predecessor, a basic black and white MS Paint drawing that is currently hidden in the labyrinths of online message boards waiting for its time in the limelight? Perhaps something like the bro visited his friend meme character will expand into a whole palette of characters and replace Wojax? Or will it be another entirely different style of expression? The answer to this, of course, is unknowable. Only time will tell. As Rage Comics move farther back into history and Wojaks continue to flourish, the next generation grows closer. One thing is for sure. As long as the internet exists, memes will too. And they will continue to evolve and change forever as a unit of cultural transmission.